Hey guys, it's Kim Fatsu Cosplay here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a Bowsette cosplay. Bowsette took over the internet in just two days, so I knew immediately that I really, really wanted to make this costume. In this first video, I'm going to show you guys how to make this really cool Bowser shell. It's made completely from foam, clay, and EVA foam sheets. If you guys would like to see more tutorials and learn how to make your own cosplay costumes, please check out our website where we have tons of cool tutorial books for various characters that can help you with your own cosplay creation. We also do new tutorials every single month on Patreon, which includes a tutorial book, templates, and a video. Alright, so, let's get started. So before we get started, let's go over what we're going to need. To make this, I'm going to use a big polystyrene ball, some cling wrap, duct tape, a pen, some one centimeter thick EVA foam, and some foam clay from Lumen's workshop. The first thing we need to do for the shell is make a pattern. So to do this, I'm going to take the big polystyrene half sphere I have and wrap it up in some cling film. I'm then going to cover the cling film with some duct tape which I can draw onto. I then took my pen and started to draw on all the seams onto the sphere so that when I split it up it lies completely flat. Make sure that you also add on some registration marks so that when you join the pieces you know where to connect them to make the shape. I then pulled the tape pattern off the sphere and used my scissors to carefully cut it out. This is what the pattern looks like when it's finally laying flat. I took my pattern and used this to draw onto some 1 cm thick EVA foam. When you draw around your pattern, again, make sure that you draw on your registration marks. This pattern is only for half the shell, so make sure that you flip it over and draw it out again in reverse. I then cut out my EVA foam pieces using a nice sharp craft knife. If your craft knife is not sharp, it will rip the foam, so make sure that your knife is nice and sharp so that you get nice clean edges. Once all my pieces were now cut out, I then took some contact glue, put it on each side, let it get a little bit tacky, and then I could connect the two pieces together. Make sure that you carefully line up your registration marks to get the nice curve of the shell. To help get more of a curve and refine the shape a little bit more, I just heated it up with my heat gun and then pressed and stretched it with my fingers to try and make the curve nice and even. To make all my segments on the shell, I first drew them out with a pen so that I could have a rough idea of where I wanted them to go, and then, using my soldering iron, I burnt the lines into the foam. When burning foam, make sure that you're doing it in a well-ventilated area or that you're wearing a respirator because the fumes can be quite toxic. To help fill in the seams on the shell, I used a little bit of gesso canvas primer and smoothed it out with some water. Now I had to make all the spikes that go on the shell. So, to do this, I used the foam clay from Lumen's Workshop. Foam clay is really, really cool. It's a very squishy clay that is easy to mold and sculpt with. And once it dries, it's exactly like EVA foam. I slowly rolled out and sculpted my spikes and then left them to dry. To make the edging all the way around my shell, I took a pre-cut bevel from Lumen's Workshop, which I then just glued all the way around and it worked perfectly. This bevel is two centimeters thick. Once my spikes were all dry, I then glued them onto the shell with some contact glue. The last thing was to make the round edging around each of my spikes. So to do this, I cut out a small strip of 5mm EVA foam. I then took the foam strip and with some scissors, I carefully cut off the edges all the way along the top. Then I took my heat gun and heated up the piece and rolled it out on my table to make it nice and smooth. And that's how I made my round edging. Once I had all my edging pieces, I then took it and glued it around each spike with some contact glue. And now the turtle shell is all built and ready for priming and painting. To prime all my armor and props, I always use cold glue wood glue. This is a PVA based wood glue and it makes everything nice and smooth and shiny. I pour the glue into a cup and then with a brush I dip it in and start to spread it all over the shell. I also dip my brush in a little bit of water to help me smooth it out. For me, my magic number for priming is 6 layers of wood glue. No less, but you can go more if you want it even more smooth. 
this is what one layer of wood glue looks like. Make sure that you let it dry completely before adding your next layer. Now it's time to paint. To add my base coats, I love to use my airbrush. I use a little Iwata Revolution airbrush to do all my painting. I also use Createx Wicked Color airbrush paints, which are wonderful and have such nice colors. To mix this, I have a small mixing jar. To clean and thin my paint, I also use Ultimate Airbrush Thinner and Cleaner. I also have a small pot where I can keep my airbrush and spray out any excess paint. And finally, you will also need an air compressor with a tube to connect to your airbrush. I know airbrushing can seem very complicated and scary, but it's really simple and really fun. So I sprayed my entire shell white and then I masked off the rim and the spikes so that I can add my green paint. Once I finished spraying everything with the green paint, I then let it dry and pulled off my masking tape. I accidentally pulled off a little bit of the white paint, but it was okay because I just fixed it with a little bit of acrylic paint. The final step for my base coat was to paint all the rims around my spike an orange color. To do this, I just used a brush and some acrylic paint. To get a nice smooth finish with acrylic paint, just do lots of thin layers and build up the color over time. If you put too much paint on in one go, it will leave lots of brush strokes. Now it's time to add some shadows. To do this, I'm going to use some oil paint. I love working with oil paint because it dries nice and slowly and gives you time to make wonderful gradients. Acrylic paint dries too quickly for me, so I find it difficult to work with to make the nice shadows. I'm starting by adding some light green highlights all the way around the rim. I'm going to paint it on with a brush and then with a dry clean brush, I'm going to dab and stipple until it's nice and blended out. Finally, I'm going to take some more dark oil paint and paint it in between all my lines. Oil paint does take a long time to dry, sometimes even three days. So it's not great for last minute stuff, but it really does give amazing results with smooth shading. The final thing is to make attachments. So for the shell, I didn't want any straps on my shoulders. So because the EVA foam is really light, I decided to make a choker to go around my neck where the shell attaches at the back. This gets hidden under my spike collar and then it looks like I don't have any straps for the shell. And with that, the shell is done. Let's get started. And that's how I made my Bowser shell. I hope this video has been helpful and if you guys enjoyed it, please subscribe and follow us on some of our social media for more of our work below.